Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is cancelling his trip to the Caribbean this week. It's all in an effort to address the ongoing Wet'suwet'en dispute and the blockades that have sprung up across the country in support. Now, Trudeau has been facing criticism for not returning from Africa when the blockade started over a week ago. A statement from the Prime Minister's office says he will convene the Incident Response Group tomorrow in order to address infrastructure disruptions and to discuss the next steps forward. The statement goes on to say that their priority remains the safety and security of all Canadians and the swift resolution of the issue to restore service across the rail system in accordance with the law. Meanwhile, it has been another day of protests across this country. From the Maritimes to the West Coast, demonstrators are showing support for BC's Wet'suwet'en hereditary chiefs and their opposition to a pipeline project. It's important to let the government know that if we stand together, we actually hold a lot of land in Canada. And if we stand together as one, we can do a lot. We can do a lot, shut down Canada. But Sowetan supporters are blocking or delaying rail and road traffic in multiple locations. In Tyndanaga, Ontario, the site of the most contentious blockade, Ottawa held its first talks with Mohawk leaders. Their protest has halted rail service for days along the vital corridor linking Toronto to eastern Canada. While there was modest progress, the blockade remains in place. Now, one protest began this afternoon at the PEI entrance to the Confederation Bridge, which links the island to the mainland. The CBC's Sarah McMillan has more on that demonstration. Activists started gathering here in Borden Carlton at around noon today. What started with about a dozen activists grew to more than 30 by late afternoon. Uh, on the median of the road leading to the Confederation Bridge, there are a few cars set up, and that's where the activists are gathered as well. There's been some drumming and singing, and many people are holding signs, and they're partially blocking one lane of traffic, but cars and trucks are still able to get through and get onto the Confederation Bridge. Now, there are a few RCMP officers here, and they say that really their role has just been to help direct traffic and they're here just in case there's any violence but they say they really don't have concerns that everything has been very peaceful here so far. Now some of the activists I spoke with said they had originally hoped to do a little bit more of a blockade. They say there's never a plan to block cars from getting onto the bridge but they had hoped to block transport trucks. They say when it started at noon today there's a small group here so that wasn't really feasible. Now that there's a larger group some say they are still interested in possibly uh, uh, blocking traffic more so blocking those transport trucks. Others saying they aren't actually really interested in that. They say they really just want to bring attention to the issue and they say you know slowing down traffic achieves that as it, that's a method for them to get the message out. There are some people handing out flyers to some of those cars as they slow down describing what's happening in BC. Uh, the activists say you know they've been really uh, inspired and motivated watching what's happening across the country seeing the other demonstrations and they really just felt it was time to do something here on PEI as well to show that support for the Wet'suwet'en hereditary chiefs does extend to this province as well. Uh, here today there are people from local Mi'kmaq communities as well as others who just want to show their support and this demonstration is expected to continue until noon tomorrow. Sarah McMillan, CBC News, Boarding Carleton. Now, as we mentioned, probably the most disruptive rail blockade in the country so far is the one in Tyndanaga, Ontario. That's cut off all the train traffic between Toronto, Montreal and eastern Canada. The Minister of Indigenous Services held marathon talks with Mohawk leaders on Saturday. CBC's Olivia Stefanovic brings us the latest. The Mohawks of Tyndanaga are still at their camps by the tracks. This is day 11 of their demonstration. People have been coming by with supplies, firewood, food. These Mohawks say they don't plan to leave anytime soon, despite a key meeting yesterday with Indigenous Services Minister Mark Miller. He visited the community and spoke with the Mohawks for more than nine hours. The minister described the meeting afterwards as open, frank, and painful at times. They discussed the situation in northern BC. The Mohawks say they won't leave these camps until RCMP get out of Wet'suwet'en territory. The minister says he's going to bring those concerns to the federal government and try to fast track that issue. But the Mohawks also want the minister to discuss historical grievances they have with Canada. The Mohawks here have a land dispute. They say that CN Rail had no right to lay the tracks where they did. So this is why the Mohawks have set up camp right beside the line here, effectively forcing the rail company to shut down rail service across most parts of the country.
country. The minister says that modest progress was made yesterday, but more work needs to be done. According to the prime minister's office, Miller spoke to Justin Trudeau before and after yesterday's meeting. It's Sunday today, so cabinet won't meet until next Tuesday unless they meet sometime before then, unless there's an emergency meeting called. Miller says that he, need, he needs to discuss next step with his cabinet colleagues, and he hopes that all of this can end peacefully. But for now, there is no end in sight. Olivia Stefanovic, CBC News, Tyndanega.